evening. I'm Amy from the Sea Cadets and we have Jez who has joined us from the Duke of Edinburgh Award and this evening is going to be looking at uh, the Duke of Edinburgh and how you can get involved as a volunteer. I'll hand over to Jez. Thanks Amy. Uh, yeah my name's Jez. I work for the Duke of Edinburgh's Award and one of my most important roles and most enjoyable roles is to support all participation within the Sea Cadets um, and I work very close with Amy and your headquarters staff officer Steve Coles who I think we're hoping will join us tonight at some point and all your all regional um, area staff officers DFE and this evening so thanks for joining us uh, this evening I was asked to just go through what we call our introduction to the DFE and normally this is um, a three-hour course that when once you've completed it it's uh, if you if you're involved further when the Duke of Edinburgh's awarded it's shown as a, a course you've completed but because we've only got 40 minutes tonight I've, I've cut it right back and I'm just gonna hopefully explain to you all how easy it is to deliver the DV at your units um, it might be that you you're aware it already is being delivered and you want a bit of a reminder or you might be at a unit that don't deliver so the message from us is it's exceptionally simple to deliver the DV and I hope you hope you feel that way at the end but uh, I know Amy will be collecting all the questions and answers and at the end we can have a little question and answer session but I hopefully this uh, the slides won't be too much information for you and uh, yeah I'll just get going so if you were attending the 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 actual intro course and we do those virtually now we used to do them face to face we can't everything's done virtually using a system called Adobe Connect if any of you are aware of that introduction to the DV is normally split into two uh, there's a short course and there's a second part that starts at number six but what I've done this evening is I've taken parts one two three four and five and just cut them right back to talk to you about uh, the DV and how it's delivered specifically uh, with the Sea Cadets. So just uh, this first slide shows you all the courses that we actually run and deliver so, uh, to all the organisations that um, partake in DV, whether that's the likes of you and we call you national operating authorities because you've got like a national footprint you're the same uh, as the scouts the air cadets the girl guiding uh, the ATC all massive youth organizations that deliver the DV and we've obviously got schools we've got businesses we've got colleges very few universities at the moment and also things like uh, secure training centers youth youth offending institutes and some uh, prisons that take younger inmates and these are the courses that we deliver and I won't go into them massively but you can see in red that we're just touching very briefly tonight on introduction to the DV but others that are very very popular are the ones on the left hand side expedition supervisor and expedition assessor because those of you have got a little bit of knowledge about the DV will understand you have to complete an expedition and when you complete the expedition you need someone who's a trained supervisor and a trained assessor but we do those courses online they're not face-to-face -face practical courses we do them online we try and make them as practical as possible with case studies and exercises but ultimately they're done face to face you won't be getting out on any mountains doing those but that's just an idea of the other courses that we run and also with on our uh, website uh, dvtraining.org and there's just a couple of examples there there's a mass of online training people can do so if any of you think well I liked what Jez and Amy said uh, that Tuesday but you don't come to do anything maybe till after Christmas in the new year uh, just feel free to go into our training part of our website and you can log on to any number of e-induction or e-learning courses and we'll remind you I actually thought about trying to lead you through one of these tonight but you actually have to log in as an individual and I don't think it would have worked but they're all there uh, to access so I've already finished part one I cut all the rest of it out so what is the DFV I just thought I would cover some very very basic stuff about the DFV so there is the slide we normally show for intro and there's our mission statement there I know you the sea cadets will probably have a mission statement but we're here to inspire guide and support young people in their self-development and very importantly also recognize their achievements we sort of come under the umbrella of the international award the DV international award and 
I'm always asked to point out, and it says on here 130 countries and territories, but the DOV is actually done internationally. And I think we are up to nearly 140 countries and territories, but that number fluctuates. So the DOV isn't just a Youth Achievement Award that uh, is completed in the United Kingdom, uh, but also I'll stick to the 130 on there, countries and territories worldwide. So if one of your young cadets works towards a DOV award and wants to travel, maybe travel abroad to get a job, uh, great for a CV and recognised not just in the United Kingdom. We have some guiding principles. I will quickly go through these because the way the slides work, it just wants me to talk about everyone, but we're non-competitive, uh, achievable by all, and lots of the uh, sections, especially the expedition, lots of variations to what people can and can't do, but ultimately it's to make sure it's achievable by all, not just able-bodied, but everyone else. They're voluntary awards. Young people should really only do an award if they want to and they volunteer. So schools that just have a, a whole class intake, uh, they are actually breaching probably our guiding principles and certainly the same would be for the sea cadets. And I, I know we don't have a unit that says everyone's doing it. It is voluntary and we would like it to stay that way. It's a voluntary award. It's all about personal development. Awards are personalised and by that I mean when I chat later to you about the different sections you'd encourage your cadets to do, we try and make sure it's personalised, so they're not told what to do. And we have had occasions, and I always mention schools, I shouldn't always pick on schools, it happens the same elsewhere, where everyone's told, right, well, you're all going to do this for your physical, you're all going to do this for your volunteering. It should be a personal choice. Balanced, we like people to uh, mix and match what they do, so they don't just stick to one subject and try and use that for their volunteering. I always use like football. So if someone's doing a voluntary football coach role, that's fine. But then we rather they wouldn't then for their physical use football as their physical and then also for their skills as well. And if I'm talking voluntary physical and skills and some of you don't understand what I'm on about, I will come to that in a sec. It's progressive. So there's a bronze, silver and gold award. We always like people once they've achieved an award to progress to the next level. It's achievement focus, demands commitment. And that's because there's a certain amount of time a young person has to um, dedicate to an award each week and then over a certain amount of months, whether that's three, six, 12 or sometimes even 18. So it's demands commitment. But more, most importantly, and we like to think all these guiding principles are equally important, is that uh, young people enjoy it. And certainly when I go and meet young people at a Royal Palace, because when a young person gets a gold award, they get to celebrate at a Royal Palace if they want. If the majority of times I ask, you know, sum up in one word your DOV, uh, they say enjoyable or fun. So a few benefits here uh, that we've listed. Um, for participants and I won't go through them all. Have a quick look, see what you think. And you, you might think, well, lots of this uh, just being a member of the Sea Cadets and other qualifications or awards a Sea Cadet can achieve are the same. But And I, I'm not taking that away because I know that is the case. And I think I'll mention later that a lot of work that cadets are doing for internal awards and qualifications can like double count and they can also count for their DOV. So probably more importantly for you tonight is just to talk a little bit about how the DOV is delivered. I think the first thing, let's just see what the next slide says. <clears throat> so delivering the DOV, that, that slide just really shows, it's probably just more for me so it can, I can jog my brain and let and explain that you as a sea cadets are licensed to deliver the DOV. So every year you very kindly pay us a small fee to have a license to deliver and it's not actually me or my colleagues at Windsor HQ that, that deliver it uh, that's all done by you um, by the volunteers the great bunch of volunteers at the sea cadets so it can be delivered at any unit within the United Kingdom uh, including um, Guernsey and Jersey I believe as well so if someone wants to deliver it there's, there's no cost you all you already have the license and you're already able to deliver it. it's just that some units I know it's not delivered so look at the the little section on the right there it talks about license organization so you are a national operating authority we just ran that off as a NOAA 
The others are just operating authorities, businesses, and on the left, you've got DLC, which means directly licensed centre. And that's mainly now for schools. It used to be that county councils would hold that licence, so they would pay a licence to us, the DOV, and they would be able to deliver the DOV at any school or college or pupil referral unit in that county. But with cutbacks, we found that counties have withdrawn from there and now schools, because they still believe so much in the DOV, just purchase a licence and we call them a DLC. So they're all these sort of terms for me, but just concentrate on that you are, as the Sea Cadets are a national operating authority. Um, so you as the authority underneath you, you have your centres and really the centres are just your units. Um, and then the groups underneath would be gr groups of individual young cadets that are doing their award. But if that was confusing, this might be even more confusing, but this is C cadet specific. So this is just to let you know that there is already a setup to help support delivery in all regions of the United Kingdom, even if your own individual unit or even in your district, you think uh, participation is pretty poor, non-existent. And there are areas, certainly Cornwall is one where participation is sort of virtually zero. So at the very top, at the National Operating Authority level, the Sea Cadets, you've got Steve Coles, who's the HQ staff officer, DFE, and also in our terms, he's our He's your DV manager and now also supported by Amy, who's arranged the call tonight, who's a desk officer at uh, La not Lambeth because you're based on the south coast, aren't you? So underneath uh, Steve, he's got then a network of uh, six area staff officers and I get to meet them every couple of months. We used to meet face to face, but now we just do everything as everyone else does on teams. So uh, six area staff officers and virtually all of those six have got an assistant staff officer as well. And underneath there, we see your districts and ultimately what we would like to achieve, and we don't have it in every district, is there's a district lead as well for the DOV. I work quite closely with a lady called Jill Loveridge, who was the district lead for Surrey, uh, and we worked on participation there. And we found by working together and speaking to young people and to parents and young volunteers, the, the DOV in Surrey really hit off. Unfortunately, with COVID, it's probably hit a bit of a brick wall, but still very keen. And we had a great big get together to celebrate a district night where all the cadets came together who would achieved awards, not just the DOV ones, but uh, everything else that you do. So under the district, then you've got your unit uh, and it's the units, probably the most important part of that little infographic there. It's uh, you the volunteers at the units that are actually going to be the leaders and help support cadets to do their DOV. But uh, I think that infographic really, for me, just helps to describe to you that there is already an infrastructure for DOV delivery up and down the entire United Kingdom, even if we haven't quite got into every unit and even some districts, but we're working on it. I would like to say that not this year, obviously, because everything has slowed down, but the year before, so the year uh 1920 you had one of your best years ever for young people starting awards i think it was a thousand and sixty six cadets up and down the country starting awards and we always try and then convert that into at least 50 percent actually achieving an award which was great for the sea cadets and great for steve and his team in the bottom of the slide there it talks about case study two and three please just ignore that that's where we could turn 40 minutes into three hours which unfortunately we can't do tonight so you looked a little bit about the infrastructure uh how it works from the sea cadets but more specifically individual roles and we have defined roles so like you have defined roles and ranks within the sea cadets we have uh, defined roles for our national operating authorities and all our license centers but ultimately there's one dv manager for every licensed organization so you have one it's steve he obviously has a lot more work than say um, a smaller um, directly licensed center or school would have because steve is ultimately covering the entire united kingdom he's got that underneath him uh, we call them coordinators and administrators, and that's where his assistant staff officers and their assistants will support him to do that in a regional base level. We also have people who are trained to be award verifiers. So you, know, you deliver the awards, uh, we don't, but we like to think that when a young person enrolls an award, that they have the same experience as a, a young person somewhere else in the country. And because they demand commitment and they're internationally recognised, we wouldn't like to think that if someone, say, walk, working towards a silver or a gold, that somehow they had a sort of an easy ride. 
So we have trained a network of award verifiers to make sure that when a young person has completed everything they need to do, it is independently verified. So you as, I mean, you can volunteer to be award verifiers. We run a course for that. That was one of those on that little uh, wheel of courses I showed earlier. I didn't mention it, but that's there. But ultimately we'll be looking for for you really to be the leaders and to under, undergo these introductory courses. So there are a network of award verifiers. And then we've got DV leaders when really these are, I think, uh, the most important part of the whole model. So I'm thinking this is going to be people like you. Ultimately, you're in face to face contact with the cadets that will be able to do the DV. And as leaders, you just lead them through it. You support them, you encourage them to participate. They share with you their ideas of what they want to do for their awards. And as they upload evidence of what they're doing, you can um, just say that's absolutely fantastic. You can approve it. And then when they complete their sections, and I'll talk a little bit in a minute about what the sections involve. You can say, right, this cadet's done it. I think they've done it and I mark it to go to the verifier to be approved. And we also have a network of expedition assessors who are trained to assess expeditions, but every young person, doesn't matter what they do for any section, will need to nominate an assessor, just somebody who can provide like a reference of what they're doing to say they've done what they say they were going to do. They did it for the right amount of time and they maybe met their target or worked towards their target. But you as leaders can be assessors, but we always encourage someone who's got some knowledge of what the young person's doing. Uh, it might be if they're doing some, we had skydiving as a yesterday as a potential for an expedition, but if they chose that for a physical, they did choose it for a physical, then I think the assessor for skydiving might need to be someone who's got a bit of expertise in skydiving. But yeah, we also have, so they're the main roles. Um, so you've got your DOV manager in place, you've got your ASOs in place, you've got a network of reward verifiers in place. You've got lots and lots of DV leaders up and down the country, um, maybe not everywhere. And to be a DV leader, you don't have, to, it's not compulsory for you to attend any DV training. You can do that e induction thing on our website, and we'd always encourage you to do the full introductory to the DV course, which is normally spread over two sessions, three hours each. And we normally do one, one week and one the next. We do them in the evening, occasionally at weekends. Uh, sometimes during the day. So we try and do them to suit uh, everyone around work and other commitments. So you've got your um, network of leaders and you've got a network of assessors. So the, everyone's in place, but like all things, we just need more people because, you know, as people move on from the sea cadets and they've sort of done their volunteering time and think they want to retire, then we just need a new fresh pool, certainly of leaders and assessors to come on and take on that role and help the young people to achieve. I won't hang around on this slide too much. I'm not quite sure of how we're getting on for time, but this is, was a, a, a quiz that you'd have done and you wouldn't have had the answers in, in right there. But that just gives you a bit of an example of what each individual person will do. So the first one, the DV leader, number one, I help participants in my group select their program and use eDV to record their choices. EDV is simply our computer based system for monitoring progress. So every young person that gets or enrolls onto a ward gets an automatic place in EDV uh, and they upload their ideas of what they want to do. Their leader says yes, that's absolutely fine. And they start working towards those activities by uploading evidence to show what they're doing. And once they've completed what they need to complete, the leader approves them. So you've got the award verifier. I think I've probably covered that. And it's just going down. Let me just think. It says a supervisor there at the bottom one. I'm a qualified scuba diving coach and have been supporting two silver participants. That's really, that's a, that's a bonus role, I think, to have somebody, when I mentioned the skydiving, if you're going to have someone doing something really unusual, then you might want someone to supervise them. But if they're using skills or physical activity or volunteering, which is easily supervised, or assessed, it can be done by you as a leader. They might be doing something they already do at their unit night. It might be a drill. It might be they volunteer with the unit. Uh, they might use a physical activity like sailing in the summer as their physical activity. And that's all things that you as leaders 
or potential leaders uh, could supervise and sign off. So don't worry too much about that specialist supervisor role. And then we're just going into the sort of high level management stuff where it's um, and don't worry too much about local authority. Obviously, these slides are really aimed not just at the DOV, uh, not just at you, the C cadets, but also schools and colleges. Uh, programs. I know Steve did ask me just to touch very quickly on programs, so I will. So if you're not aware of it already. Uh, there's three levels, three awards, bronze, silver and gold. P people would normally start uh, bronze and work their way up to gold. You don't have to do all three. You can you can start bronze, skip silver, go to gold. You can skip bronze, silver and just do silver and gold. Or you can skip bronze and silver and just do gold. Or you can do bronze and think I've done bronze. I didn't like it. I'm not doing that again. For the bronze and silver, there's three acti four activities a young person has to complete volunteering physical skills and expedition at gold as a fifth residential and just talks about age groups the only age requirements are there is a minimum age for each award level at bronze it's 14 or you've got to be your academic year you turn 14 you can start silver a year older you need to be 15 that academic year and i know it talks about their which their peer group turns 15 so it's really the same thing. So if a 13 year old starts with a bunch of 14 year olds at school or with you, maybe after the summer, as long as they're going to turn 14 as well in that academic year, they can start the award. Same for silver, but gold It's very simple. You have to be 16, You've got to be 16 years old to start um, your gold. And the only other age thing that you need to be aware of is all awards, whatever a young person is doing. They must be completed by their 25th birthday. So when they get to 25, they're not completed. Unfortunately, they've run out of time. But we like to think uh, even if you're starting a gold at 18, that's still seven years to complete. Some people do take a long time and all of a sudden that last minute they're rushing around to get everything signed off. So it takes all sorts to complete an award. It's just a little bit more information about uh, the five sections. The only one are mentioned specifically, or the only two is the expedition. All DV expeditions have to comply to 20 conditions. So it's got to be a DV like approved expedition. You can't just get a group of young people or mates just going off for a weekend doing their own thing. There's 20 conditions they have to abide by and all expeditions have to be supervised and assessed by a trained member of staff. And if you just cast your mind back to the beginning of the presentation, and we saw all those courses. I mentioned specifically the expedition assessor and expedition supervisor. So they're courses that we run. So lots of DV leaders, sorry, lots of sea cadet leaders who are mountaineers trained or adventure trained. They're then asked to go on these DV specific courses so they can supervise and assess DV expeditions. And then the residential one, which basically means a young cadet will have to spend five days and four nights away in a residential set setting, doing a shared activity with a group of people. Normally we would say they've not met before, but if they're going to say some sort of regional uh, sea cadet based or led residential, it might be they know one or two people because you can't not know anyone if you're going as part of a unit, but we would only ask certainly that they spend time with cadets they don't know. The reason I didn't sort of hang around on that slide too much is uh, Steve Coles, your HQ staff officer, put this together just to give you an idea. There's a lot of crossover between what we would see a volunteering opportunity and what we would see as physical and skills to what you do day in, day out of your unit nights. So for volunteering, it's got to be for a not for profit organisation, charity or community organisation. So you are I think you're a registered charity or certainly we would see as a community based organization. So lots of the stuff, if the cadets got a defined role within the unit, then that can count towards their DOV and for physical, a lot more opportunities. So virtually everything they do that's physical will count towards their DOV uh, skills. Just Steve's picked out a few there, marksmanship, seamanship, they will count towards a young cadet's DOV. Expeditions don't have to be uh, in mountains or lowland walking or the countryside. They can be water based, so it's brilliant. It sort of fits in nicely with what you do. 
and then the residential can be a land or offshore sea cadet experience. As long as that's proviso whilst they're on it, they don't just get like 10 cadets from the same unit going somewhere all doing the same thing. There should be a bit of a mix and match of cadets from different locations because the residential is all about those social barriers, people going on a residential opportunity, they might be a little bit shy, don't easily talk to people they don't know. It's trying to break down those little barriers, taking young people out of their comfort zone. So that's hopefully, if someone's working towards a seamanship qualification within the sea cadets, then that can count towards their DV. They don't have to be specifically doing it for their DV. There's no, we're not proud about things like that. So they're doing drill for something they're doing their drill for a competition that will count towards their DAV. It doesn't have to be solely for their DAV. Uh, there is a there are time requirements. It does all awards require some commitment. I won't go into these because I believe you as an audience aren't actually wanting to do your DAV. You're just wanting to see how you can help deliver it. But a young cadet will have to spend a certain amount of time. And the next three slides just talk about what they need to do for each section. And you'll see in a minute that as we progress to silver and gold, the three months, three months and three months goes goes up. There's always a little caveat that they don't just at bronze do some everything for three months. For one section, they have to choose to do something for th an extra three months. So ultimately, a bronze award is going to take a minimum of six months to complete. And an expedition at bronze, you're looking at two days and one night. And where it says six hours of planned activity just basically means you don't have to spend all six hours walking. Um, you can split that. 50 50 between travel which when we we our term travel means walking horse riding kayaking cycling sailing whatever form of travel you've chosen so at least a uh, half has to be travel but the other half can be another planned activity like a project uh, it can't be the other way around well sorry i'm jumping the gun here travel can be 95 percent and five percent can be project uh, but at least half has to be travel. So you can't be doing 5% travel and 95% projects. And the reason we throw in the projects, it's all about this adventurous journey. It's not all about the travel. Some people might not be physically capable to knock out six hours, um, self-sufficient rucksack on the back or whatever it is, or kayaking. So we do allow more time towards projects. It just makes it achievable by all. So as so we go up, uh, you'll just see that everything goes up in time. So now we're looking at six months, six months and three, three days and two nights for the expedition. And there's a little caveat where it talks about participants who have not achieved their bronze. So if someone goes straight to silver, they just have to demonstrate a little bit more commitment time wise and they have to add an extra six months to one of their six month sections that they've chosen above. So ultimately for them, it's going to turn into a 12 month program. When I talk about, I'm going to mention just briefly about expeditions. You, you might think, well, we're not, we, how can we run expeditions? We can't do expeditions. What I do know is that Steve is an HQ staff officer. Uh, he's assistant regionally and even at district level, they will run um, like open expeditions and invite cadets on. So if, if, if you are from a unit that just doesn't have the skills, or maybe even the equipment or the volunteers to run an expedition, please don't worry. There will be opportunities to send your cadets on district or regional, even national best based expeditions. But certainly I would like to think that the volunteering physical and skills are aspects that any unit up and down the UK could actually run and support. And then if you do get stuck at expedition, look to do something like an open expedition. And then for gold time, uh, the months have gone up. It's now 12, 12 and six. Same rule applies if they've gone straight to gold, not done their silver, they have to show that little extra bit of commitment. The expedition now goes up to four days and three nights. Normally done in wild country at gold and our definition of wild country is somewhere like Snowdonia, Brecon Beacons, Lake District, virtually all of Scotland some parts of the Peak District and Yorkshire Dales and the Yorkshire Moors wild country. And it's only a gold we expect that expedition to just be a little bit more challenging than maybe a bronze expedition where they're walking along uh, a canal towpath or in country that's quite familiar to them as young people. 
and the residential five days and four nights. Although that can be split into two like long weekends if five days isn't possible. So I didn't want to spend too much time on the actual uh, program times because I, I will have to probably add that whilst a young cadet is working towards say their three or six months they actually have to commit an hour a week to that activity so if you look at the silver uh, where they chose six six and three if they started all three activities at once they started their volunteering they started their physical they start, started their skills all at the same time say all say on the first of jan they all enroll and start the cadet would have to spend an hour each week to each section so ultimately that's three hours a week of work uh, they can combine the hours to maybe one four hour session each month certainly for the longer ones like the 18 months at gold and volunteering it might be better for them to combine it but they have to do the the, the full three months the full six months the full 12 months or the full 18. somebody asked yesterday if if they did say 10 hours a week straight away every day they did 10 hours a week could they uh, smash out their award earlier? No, they can't, unfortunately. They've got to show that commitment over that time scale that we covered in those last three slides. And the hour a week is a minimum. If they want to do eight hours a day, absolutely fine. No one's going to stop them, uh, but that's their personal choice. The hour a week is the minimum. Just wanted to point out, certainly from, from us, the DFE, we've got quite an extensive website. We have changed it a lot recently to make it easier to navigate around. Some people love it and some people don't like it as much. We still haven't got it quite right, uh, but I've just about got used to it. I know Steve's very good with it, but it's there and it's, it's you know, it's a public resource. You don't have to be participating in the DV to have a look. Just log on to uh, DV.org and we have a resource centre. We have loads of materials that if you have young leaders want to start supporting cadets, loads of materials and links and videos and it's on our resource center and i've tried to sort of replicate it on this slide but if you look at the filter bit underneath there's a delivery toolkit there's communications advice there's information about how you can recruit participants all about it's just all there loads of videos lots of stuff lots of ideas of what young people can do and one thing we've we've adapted, like I know the Sea Cadets have adapted to the COVID and the pandemic, we've adapted. And there's another page on our website, it will be called DV with a difference. And ultimately that is all the rule changes, relaxations, ideas that we, we can find that we've come up with to help young people achieve their award even during the pandemic. Um, whether that's reducing the need to go to wild country for a gold expedition and being able to actually travel home at night as opposed to camping, that's so absolutely fine. Whether it's coming up with lots of ideas how people can volunteer remotely so they don't have to leave. Certainly there was a, somebody on the call last night that was a bit upset about having to go somewhere to volunteer because of the pandemic. Well, there's lots of opportunities where you can support charities remotely via your phone or your laptop. Uh, the same as, you know, just think of Joe Wick. So if someone wants to do a physical activity, there's no reason why they can't do that at home or if they want to do something on their own, that's absolutely fine. But that's our resource centre and I'm sure that uh, you as the Sea Cadets have probably got similar. But next slide is, it's just hopefully there's some sound. Amy, is there sound nodded? There is. No. OK. Well, in which case. Um, I might try and share that with sound in a minute, but obviously I've not clicked the button for sound. I think at this point we were going to ask Steve just to step in and talk more specifically about how how the DV is delivered, you know, on a on a the ground level. Steve's not here, is he? No. <laughs> OK, Amy, is there any questions so far? Yes, there are. Let me just see so if I can. The first one is from Jenny. To access the DV learning online, you need an eDV login. How do you get a login? Does the attendant this course automatically register for you? One. You need okay. to contact your ASO. So, yes, you do need to contact your ASO. Um, 
and if you are interested in becoming a leader um, then they will be able to send you the form to complete and get you logged on to that platform and, uh, I think uh, I'm not sure whether I certainly do that. Do the e-learning. Anyone can do that. You don't need an EDV account or a profile. You can just log in as like a guest and do those e-learning platforms. And I'm also pretty pretty sure that if you were really so keen and you found out how to join a course, you could actually join a, a full course um and you, you would get like a, a draft place but that would need someone like steve or one of the area staff officers to sort of firm you up as a leader but it's very simply done yeah steve has just said as well that we are going to be offering a introduction to dv virtually around the end of january middle of february um, yeah. and the details will be on the tna for that yeah so um, I, the, the DFE deliver the, all those courses, but you as a through Steve and a, and a big group of staff also deliver them without involving me. Am I coming through loud and clear? I keep getting a signal saying my signal's gr not great. Yeah. I hope I don't, OK, we can hear you. Super. That's all the questions. For the oh, moment. Okay. Shall I just see if I can uh, share that video with sound? Hold on. Yeah. There's normally a button that says share sound, sound, but it doesn't say I can't see it. So I'm not going to bother. Sorry. It was just a, it was an example of the type of videos that we have that it, you can download and show to cadets or parents um, in the evening. Have you finished your presentation? Sessions? Yeah, that's yeah. finished. Yeah. That was no more after that. It goes on to the part two. We don't want to talk about the part two because we'll be here a lot longer. Yeah. So if anyone has a question, then please feel free to ask. I'll send a follow up email from this with the details of if you have wanted to become a leader and you can get involved with the Sea Cadets. Uh, there is funding available from the Duke of Edinburgh's award at the moment for through the Resilience Fund, which is funded places for training for volunteers um, to become leaders. On that. And the guidance document for running DV is on the TNA. <laughs> <laughs> Steve has said. So if we don't have any other questions, we'll give it a minute or so, but that is us for this evening. Okay. I'm new to helping at Sea Cadets. Who is Southern Area ASO? Oh, well, we've got the Southern Area Training Manager <laughs> <Every one. laughs> on. So, very good. Chris Bonfield. Yes, yeah, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Chris Bonfield. He's based at Pool. Um, if you want, I can get the details, it should be available to you. So, um, I can help out with that. Uh, I need to help. Uh, OK, I can probably send his email. email address via a private reply. Yeah. I'll do that now. Don't lose the question. <laughs> <laughs> if there aren't any other questions, then we'll call it an evening. Um, we'll add in the email for you on the ASO. We finish complete. I'll get it. Hold on. Let me just get my directory. I thought I had it on now. Right. 
There we go. I've just sent that uh, as a private message to the person who's asking it. Yeah, perfect. All right, in which case, thank you very much for joining us this evening. But as there's no other questions, uh, we'll finish there and enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a good Christmas. Thank you.